Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Like I've been saying for the last little while, I am in the mood for a lot of classics and a lot of fantasy and so you're going to be seeing a few videos kind of on those topics in the next little while or I've already been making some and today we're talking about fantasy. Now historically I have not been a big fantasy reader. I read, I don't know, like a few good ones a year but I think that might be changing. Uh, last year, about a year and a half ago, I really got into historical fiction and went through what I'm calling my like historical fiction era. Now I feel like I might be moving into my fantasy era. So I have some recommendations to share today, but also I would love for you guys to give me recommendations because I do want to share the books that are on my fantasy TBR the ones I want to get to, but I also want to expand my TBR. So I'm calling my recommendations clean recommendations, and I just want you guys to note that everyone has a different definition of clean. To me, that means little to no swearing and no explicit content in the books. And I think I've found some good ones. There's definitely some variety, variety here. We have some like classics, some more recent stuff. There's just quite the span actually. So I feel like there's something for everyone, but I definitely want more recommendations. And I just remembered I forgot a book because my husband's currently reading it, so I need to quickly grab that. Okay, grab the book. I think a side note I should mention is because I have not read a ton of fantasy, I feel like I'm not as good at explaining a fantasy book plot as I am some other books. Hopefully as I read more I'll get better at it, but I feel like my ex explanations of these books are going to be fairly brief, but hopefully they'll entice you enough to pick them up. So we'll start with a book my husband's currently reading. I was raving about this one to him. This is The Eternity Gate by Catherine Briggs. This book just came out mid-September and I've been raving about it ever since I read it. I got an advanced reader's copy, so I got to read it a few weeks early. But we follow Seo. She is the handmaiden to a princess and for a variety of different reasons this princess needs to go to like different kingdom land I don't really know the exact terminology and Seo disguises herself like she pretends to be the princess you know this happens quite a bit in I feel like Disney movies I don't know it happens in things does it really happen in real life I'm not sure but things kind of go down so there is something called the eternity gate Seo kind of finds the key to it she's kind of given the key to it I guess and she also has some secrets because she is gifted with the power of fire, not the gift of light, which a lot of people in this area are. And I feel like this is a book that I'm not very good at explaining, but I completely devoured this book. And I think this is what has fueled my love or want for more fantasy in this season. So if you pick up any of these books, I mean, there's some there's really good ones on there, but I am very excited to promote this one because I really enjoyed it and I can't wait for the series to continue. Nicely, this one is just supposed to be a duology, which is good because it means it's kind of over sooner. I don't have to wait for it forever, but I feel like a duology is also, it's really good when an author knows when to wrap up a book and they don't go on forever. Personally, I like that. One that I read at the beginning of September and will be in my September wrap up next week probably I'll put it up, um, is Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So this was very out of my element. I, looking at my stack here, I don't have any others like it and I don't think I've ever read anything like this. This is based, inspired by the legend of the Chinese Moon Goddess. So a young woman has a quest to free her mother um, which sets her on a dangerous path and pits her against the most powerful immortal in the realm is the like blurb on the top. So I'm really bad at like pronouncing English words, never mind Chinese words, so I won't even try to pronounce our main character's name. But she grew up on the moon. Her mother is the moon goddess. You know, it's kind of in the title. And for various reasons, she flees to, where does she really flee? The Celestial Kingdom. And there she disguises her identity, pretends she's not the daughter of the moon goddess, and she wants to become this really great warrior in order to free her mother. So this, I think this might be a trilogy. I've only read the first book so far, but I was completely into it. This is a decently thick book and I um, shared about it a little bit in a vlog a couple weeks ago. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope the series continues, but every time there's books in a series, I get a little nervous that they won't live up to the first book. 
but I definitely enjoyed this one. Okay, then there's this really cool subgenre of fantasy that is historical fantasy, which I think is brilliant because it's a really interesting twist on a historical event or person, and it even though like there's a lot of fantasy, a lot of made-up stuff, it makes me look up the true event, and I feel like I I learn history a lot better that way than just reading it from a textbook. So I love Fox. This book is great to read at the very beginning of November because it is based off of Guy Fox and the gunpowder plot to kill the king in 1885, I think it was. Um, so Guy Fox, yeah, they wanted to assassinate the king. In this book, we follow Thomas Fox, who is Guy Fox's fictional son. And there is this stone plague that is going on. So like that's one aspect of things. The fantasy magical aspect is that um, at a certain age, I think everyone is gifted a mask or is somehow given a mask. And the color of the mask is the color of things that you can control. So, you know, if your mask is brown, you can control everything that's brown. And I just remember reading this book and looking around and being like, okay, like what color would I want? Like what what things do I want to control the most? And it was fascinating. Um, okay, so this one says 17th century London. So maybe my time, my date was wrong. Maybe it was 1650 something. The time doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, and I had the privilege years and years ago. I was an au pair in England and uh, got to see the fireworks night, which is November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day. Um, they often like have bonfire night. It's it's got a million different names um, and they still like burn uh, like fake people at the stake which is what happened to Guy Fox. So learned a lot of history actually more than when I was there but thoroughly enjoyed this. So this was by Nadine Brandes and she also wrote another historical fantasy that I really enjoyed and that's Romanov and in this one you follow the Romanov family as they are like on, on house arrest I think it was that they were on and in this fictitious version, um, Anastasia Romanov was given a single mission to smuggle an ancient spell into her suitcase on her way to exile in Siberia. And ho oh, did this make me research the Romanovs. And what I loved that she took this true fact um, and t brought it into the book and that is that the Romanovs were so kind to their captors, their guards, in their house arrest that they often had to be like rotated out because they would get sim sympathetic to the family and give them like special privileges that they weren't supposed to be given. And I mean, the Romanovs have a tragic ending, but I feel like she did a really good job with the story. Although I do find a lot of people, a lot of Christians struggle with some of the magic in this book. Personally, I enjoyed it, but I think I enjoyed it because it made me learn so much about the Romanov family. Okay, next up I got, I wanted to like showcase two versions of The Hobbit. So I love these like faux leather ones. This is my edition and then I bought this one for my daughter. Found it at a thrift store actually. Bought it for her a few years ago, I think for her birthday. It's illustrated, big words. The Hobbit is probably the only fantasy book that I read as a teenager. I remember reading it in high school. I would have been in grade 12. I have no idea what possibly caused me to pick it up because it was so out of my norm. I mostly read like mystery suspense, but I remember reading The Hobbit and like in my mind I was thinking like with the accent of The Hobbits and I have not reread it since grade 12 and it is definitely something that I want to reread soon because I loved it then and it was so different. I think I'll love it even more now. Uh, so if you don't know what The Hobbit's about, we follow Bilbo Baggins. I feel like most people do. Most people are more familiar with Lord of the Rings though. Um, in this one we follow Bilbo when he finds the ring and lots of other adventures ensue. So definitely I think a must read if you like fantasy. Okay, this book here, I have I think booktube to thank because I don't think I would have come across Brandon Sanderson at all if it weren't for booktube. Mistborn, I read my first year here on booktube and I was just enthralled. In this world that Sanderson has created, um, people can ingest certain metals and then are given certain powers. So he so nicely has a glossary at the back. So you can like ingest a metal and then you burn it and as it's burning 
you can use this power. So something like brass is a metal, mental pushing metal. A person burning brass can soothe another person's emotions, dampening them and making particular emotions less powerful. Uh, bronze is an internal metal pushing internal mental pushing metal. A person burning bronze can sense when people nearby are using allomancy. Allomancers burning metals nearby will give off allomantic pulses. And like there's just a, like a ton of different things and I feel like I should have been lost and confused but Sanderson writes his story so well that I could totally follow it. So we follow a young girl, well she's probably like late teens, um, named Vin. So Vin kind of starts out as a bit of a street urchin and she learns the power of allomancy, the whole metal pushing thing. We get to follow her as she learns it and there's a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a bit of an uprising, it says, forming. One built around the ultimate caper, the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the determination of an unlikely hero. This world is controlled by someone called the Lord Ruler and so they want to kind of kick the Lord Ruler out of power. Very good, so it's a trilogy. And then he has a second trilogy, which I have not read, which is embarrassing because I should read it. And then he's currently, I think, writing a third trilogy? I think that's a lie. I don't think the second one's a trilogy, but he has Mistborn Era 1, Mistborn Era 2, and now he's working on Mistborn Era 3. It's fascinating. Okay, this next one is actually a duology, I think, or maybe a trilogy. Pretty sure it's a duology. I've only read book one, and I feel like book one was really good. I'm not sure if I want to continue. It feels like it could have been a standalone. That is The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. So in this one, we follow a girl named Brianna. She desires only two things, to master her passion and be chosen by a patron. So she has gone to this school called Magnalia House for seven years, I think it is. So you're supposed to pick one of the five passions and like study this passion for the five to seven years that you're in the school. So there's art, music, dramatics, wit, or knowledge. And for whatever reason, she struggle, struggled way more than any other person. And every year she picked a different passion and studied it instead of the normal studying it for like five to seven years. And then because of that, at the end, kind of at graduation time, she's left without a patron, someone to take her on and continue teaching her this passion. But something does happen and this kind of like unseemly character, we'll say, offers her patronage and she takes it and she starts to learn a lot about the world, uh, that kingdom that she's in and things that she was led to believe that are not really true. And yeah, I really enjoyed this I, and I just, I kind of don't know why I haven't continued it. Once again, I think maybe because I'm a little scared book two won't be as good and I like kind of how this one ended, like it definitely left it open to continue with the duology, but I don't know. Really enjoyed this one though. And the last one, this is a trilogy. I will say this first book was by far the best and that is Mark of the Raven. And this is book one in the Ravenwood saga by Morgan L. Bussey. So in this one, we follow Lady Celine. She is just coming of age and has inherited the power that her family has. So the, this power in her family is passed on through the females and she learns that they have, her family has used this power historically for bad instead of good. So they have the power to dream walk, which is enter people's dreams. And normally what you can do is you can like help soothe people and you know, just, I don't know, like generate goodwill and like good feelings and stuff like that. But her family is using this power to assassinate people and she's not really on board with that. So, this is her story of trying to change her family's trajectory, I guess, stand up to her mom and those in her family line. I think this was my first fantasy book that I read as an adult. I read it like right before booktube and this kind of just like reignited my love for reading in general. So for that, I love this one even more. Okay, so those are my fantasy book recommendations. Judging from what I do like, leave some comments and suggestions below. I really would like to grow my TBR. I do have a book, bunch of books on my TBR that are fantasy, both on my shelves here and my shelves here. Um, but I'm always looking for more suggestions. And if you especially like one of the ones that are on my shelf, then maybe I'll bump them up. 
So give me all the recommendations below. Thanks for being here, guys.